back at it again what's up yes we are what are we going to be talking about today today we are going to be talking about rebuilding after you leave a call yes so for all the people who watched our last video you guys know that we recently dropped our healing journal we did and we have even some exciting news about that but we'll keep it for the end because y'all gotta stay tuned till yeah. the end stick okay? around till the end <laughs> yes yeah so we're just gonna kind of go more in depth about what exactly this healing journal is about. And I feel like we've been getting a lot of questions, um, you know, kind of about, even from people that are outside of the religion right. and one like having interest in buying a copy. So we want to talk about kind of everything that it's compromised of because it really can benefit anybody. Yeah, because <laughs> in a nutshell, I know for us personally, when we first left the cult, mm -hmm. it was like there was no guidelines there was no instruction manual or nothing on what to expect and so once yeah. we kind of experienced it it's like all right let's help other people and we started with a channel but it's like we can't answer every single question with videos that quick on the spot yeah. but we did come up with a way to explain what you might expect and how to kind of recover from there yes absolutely and something else is after we left it's like we went through this whole journey within because it when you first leave you just feel lost you know what i mean you For feel sure. lost and alone yeah. so in order to kind of fill those voids we started really i don't know delving deep into different kinds of like personal growth and yeah. not just spiritually but like physically and financially like we just really we just started going deep with that. We were like on on a roll with reading books and things. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> you've been lied to for this big portion of you being on this earth. Yeah. So you go into all right, what's real and what's not. Yeah. And you are you have always been told you are not allowed to search for information. Only information you can search for is this whole world of information. This right here, what we give you. Yep. This is all you can look at, and you and you be, you pretty much being threatened do not look at nothing else or it's going to be bad stuff. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah, so once you escape, it's like this becomes that yes. and you don't know where to start. Yes, and oh my gosh, and once you do, like once that world is open to you, there's just, you know, that, that um, quote, like the world is your oyster. Yeah. That's what it began to feel like after a yeah, while, sure. you know, but there's so many people I think that, leave too and sometimes you just feel stuck and you don't yeah. know where to start exactly and sometimes you are fearful of where to start mm -hmm. so this book will also help you to overcome those fears and to just realize that like personal growth is a great thing like we are always going to grow through the rest of our lives and yeah. we have to give ourselves grace to be able to have those changes because even the person that I am today I I try to give myself grace like this mm -hmm. may not be the person that I am in a couple of years right. you know what I mean because we are ever evolving and yeah. that's a good thing and I think that in the religion they try to make you feel like if you were Evolving and not at their pace, then it yeah. was a problem. It was something wrong with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what I think is very important about our journal, this journal is not giving you a new belief or yeah. telling you what you need to believe now. Yeah. All the journal is putting the mirror up and saying, all right, you were in this cult being told to be this, Yeah. but scratch that. Who are you? And that's all <laughs> yes. it's telling you to do is to dive deep in and say, what you know what do i even like to do where do yeah. i start what do i want out of life so it's not one of those books where it's like some people in the comments may say well what do you believe it doesn't yeah. matter what i believe all i know is this is something that's not right and right. i'm going through my journey to see what works for me so we encourage other people to just do what works for you because we don't we're not all meant to be cookie cutter and be the same and like the yes. same thing and believe the same thing. Yes. Do what works for you. Yes. We really went into this journal with the energy of keeping an open mind and being very, um, this is very personalized to you. And that's yeah. the whole point of it. So um, every chapter, it's like, it's not very long. So it's only 113 pages. Yep. There's 10 chapters. And each chapter is about 
10 pages, you yeah, know, give or take. Short. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give or take. But it's basically five pages of information and then may, or six or seven. And then the last part is like an introspective portion. Right. So it's not us telling you, it's you finding those answers within you. Yeah. So yeah. as far as like what, what your purpose is or like, you know, what you like to do, um, we might have a chapter of, hey, like this is all the things that we weren't allowed to do as Jehovah's Witnesses and this is what right. we were told, you know. But then the end is, who are you? Like what are the things that you like to do? What activities may have um, been holding you back or like where and mm -hmm. what areas have they been holding you back and yeah. not allowing you to really dive into the those activities, you yeah, know. For sure. Yeah, for Yeah. So we do want to highlight again that this can be for anybody and it can benefit anybody. Right. Think of it more of like a thoughts journal with our like added information into yeah. it. That's basically what it is. Yeah. But with that being said, of course we went into the journal with the idea of having, you know, people who are leaving a cult in mind because that was our experience. Yeah. So we do have that kind of thing like sprinkled in there and for people who are not in this religion or who have never been, it's still a great journal to get because yeah. it's going to be very introspective and you'll also get to learn a little bit about Jehovah's Witnesses or, you know, everybody knows a Jehovah's Witness. Right. <laughs> Might even be family with one or whatever the case may be. Uh -huh. um, so with that being said, people in cults, we made a video before about 10 signs of a cult, okay? Yeah. Once you understand these 10 signs, it's like, I don't know, the fog just releases and things become so clear. And you yeah. cannot see the religion as anything else. That's it. Yeah, I remember they that use too. so many tools. Yeah, <laughs> when I first woke up and looked up like signs of a cult, the, in this, the one I seen only showed three signs, but it was dead on, dead on, dead on. And the, this is the kicker: when it says signs of a cult, it's not saying anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, no, because there are thousands of cults. No, yeah, this is just specific to cults in general, but it just happens to fall under the category when you think about Jehovah's Witnesses. Like, wait a minute, and we'll yeah. put in the description our previous video, yes, our ten course. signs of a cult. And another thing that I want to mention too is that. A lot of religions may have a lot of these signs, okay? Yeah. And the reason why is because they are high power control groups, is what we used to call them. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's just a softer way of saying like cult. Yeah, so, that's what it is. Yes, they ha they use a lot of these um, cult like tactics, and it's to control their members. Yeah, for sure. So, so we'll start getting into it. Yeah, let's get into it. So we could start with. And this is no particular order. And yeah. just because we have 10 of them doesn't mean all 10 has to apply. And there's even more than 10. These are just some of the main ones yes. to bring out. So some of these may stand out to you. Like one of the ones that are very important is for us as Jehovah's Witnesses, when we were a part of that, the leaders of cults have this exclusive access to information <laughs> that yes. nobody else has. Yes. Only them. Only them. Yeah. And with the memorial around the corner, this is just so timely because even how they say about the 144,000, they have exclusive access to heaven and everybody else is kind of like a commoner and they get yeah. to, you know, be on a paradise earth, but they don't get to rule with Jesus. Even though that's not what the Bible says, we'll get into that in the next yeah. video. <laughs> but you see the governing body <laughs> the as you yeah. see with all these updates, Ooh, no nobody was able to make these decisions for themselves. No. Nobody was able to, you know, a year ago be like, you know, I'm about to grow my beard and go to the hall and give a talk. You had to wait for the people that can communicate with God yeah. to get this information and go, oh, yeah, you can, uh, you allowed to do this now. Yes. And then you go, okay. Come on now. That's Not a sign right. of a cult. That's exclusive access that, oh, you know, we got together as the governing body and prayerfully decided that, you know, now we can um, say hello to this fellowship ones and you do not have to <laughs> ignore them. These are normal things that like, if anybody else is hearing it would think it is crazy for you to just completely shun like your family or right. your friends. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, that role did not apply to me because I thought Heck it was no. inhumane. I that always would, even if like if it's at the Kingdom Hall, I might not be out and, and blunt with it, but I 
something like that. But yes, then when I see you outside too. the hall, I'm going to talk to you. Me too. Yeah. Me and one of my best friends at the time, like she actually, she wasn't my best friend then, but she had gotten disfellowshipped and we were just like friends, you know? Right. And we went to school together. Like we went to vocational school together. Mm -hmm. And I remember like I would see her around and I would always say hi. And just seeing like her awkward energy on the other side was... Yeah so sad to me for one but I remember this one time I caught her in the bathroom and I was just talking to her I was encouraging her to come back because you know I'm like full blown witness at that time right. okay? and she's like you're not supposed to be talking to me I'm like girl please I am not going to just not talk to you like to me right. you are still a human I had a whole friendship with you I had a relationship with you you know what I yeah. mean I, there's no way that I'm just going to never talk to you yeah for real and this is our, our little joke when we were disfellowshipped at the time we would talk to people and we'd be like, the rules say they can't talk to us. We could talk to whoever we want. <laughs> and it was funny to us, like, shoot. Yeah. yeah but yeah. yeah, that's something very awkward with, yes. with the disfellowship. And, and everybody had to wait for these, I don't know how many men it is anymore. Before it used to be eight, but I feel like they made it more men in the governing body. You know, like kick people out, add people. They just. They added like three yeah. members last year. I don't even know their yeah, names it's anymore. Just, it's out of place. Anyway. But they, ha everybody had to wait for them to tell you, like, oh, you can have, a, you can give a small greeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even the fact that they said that, like, that is control over your freedom to speak. Right. You know, like freedom of speech. Like it, you're controlling that. That's not right. No, it's not. But that's that's one of the signs. We'll get into another sign is love bombing, especially with with <gasps> new recruits. You are always told. And it's coming from the perspective of ex-witnesses. Yeah. When somebody new comes into the hall, it was talks given on it, articles on everything you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. That way you don't blow the chances of them not coming back. Yes. Yep. Look, hey, and you coming into the hall, we, not to go too far into detail because we got a video on it. People come into the hall and experience something this very bizarre. Some people think it's cool. Other people are like are uh, able to read it. Like y'all weird. They know yeah. immediately. Like people all the up, smiling faces. Like, like weird, you know, creepy smiles. It's hey and talking to you extra friendly and invite introduce. This is my husband and my wife and my kids and my. And you're getting kids. flooded. Like if you see a new face, it was always told. If you see a new face in the Keen Hall, make sure to go up and introduce yourself. Yep. So you are getting flooded with all of these people coming and introducing yourself and seeming like they're taking a genuine interest in you. Oh, you should definitely come back next week and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Like they're excited to see you. But they're not. They're just doing what they're told to do. Yeah. Yep. Sign number three is renouncing your old life. So <laughs> strip off the old personality. Yes, I was just about to say that. That's the real deal. Strip off the old personality. That was something that was so hammered into our brains. It was. You have to put on the new personality. And the new personality is basically just it's the collective mind. It's the cookie cutter yeah. Jehovah's Witness. And that's what they want to turn all of their members into cookie cutter Jehovah's Witness because for you to have your own thoughts it is literally looked down upon for real they don't want you exercising your critical mind no nope, they don't want that. they don't want you thinking because they already give you all of the tools and all of the um I don't know I don't know how to say it but like they give you all of the information on how they want you to think about something like the blueprint or something yes yeah. if you look at their footnotes all of their watchtowers like they tell you how to think about a scripture. They tell you how to think about um, a Bible story or a Bible passage. Like they literally, right. they'll talk about it and then they tell you exactly what they want you to think. In a slick way, it's not even the Bible that most Christians have. You might start off with that and then they, they give you their Bible, not realizing it's their version of the, the Bible. And then, like you said, then what overcrowds the Bible itself is the publication so now the watchtowers are 90 percent of what you read and and then the 10 percent is a little scripture that might be in the yes. in each paragraph or something yes yep. and they never add context and that is what's so frustrating yeah. about them because even even the rule of the hundred and forty four thousand, there is no context added to that doctrine it is such no. a heavily believed doctrine and they basically are like well now that we made the doctrine, we have to stand ten toes down on it. And they yeah. won't change it. Yeah. And you know what else is irritating about the whole new personality thing? Huh? 
it's like they try to men in black flash you to where your whole personality and that goes into you know your upbringing your yeah. traumas, yeah. your zodiac sign, all of these yeah. things that make you you yeah. just all of a sudden don't exist no more. You just got to cover it up and be this new person. Like, no, yeah. wh whoever you've been this whole time is you. And you can't pretend that you are not you no more. And just, oh, I'm no longer. You are still like that. You still have to, you know, battle with whatever it is that you've been dealing with in your life. Oh, I used to have a temper, but not anymore. You still got a temper deep down in there. So and there's, I'm not going to call out people I know. But there are many people that put on this personality, you know, at the Kingdom Hall that are hotheads at home with their mm. families. Mm. Come on. But they, yes, I'm brother so-and-so. Yeah. There are certain people, you know, do certain stuff outside the hall. Yeah. And then they put on, you know, all the talks given about people watching, you know what, on the websites. Corn. Yeah, you still a freak. <laughs> you, you was a freak before you was witness. You yeah. still a freak. Yeah. You just put a suit on sometime. Yep. yep. And if they, they tr it creates such a disingenuous environment and a disingenuous group of people because yeah. nobody is actually being themselves. They have the <laughs> reins so tight on you that you don't have the freedom to express yourself in the way that you want. Right. And I don't mean just like physically express yourself, although that is part of it too because yep. beards and what you could wear to the meetings, you know, yeah. how, how to have your hairstyles, how to wear your makeup, what colors to have your hair. Like, there is no individuality. No, And none of, that, none of that has to do with your relationship with God. No, and that's the main point. It is. And speaking of <laughs> relationship with God, because since everybody's supposed to be God's children, mm -hmm. brings us to number four. The us versus them mentality. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Big sign of a cult. It's crazy because like whenever I, we first went through these 10 signs of the cult, uh -huh. I was like, oh my gosh, every single one is it's, hidden. <laughs> it's spot on. Every single, yes. and, this, and you, you got to keep reminding yourself, they're not even talking about Jehovah's Witnesses. They just talking about cults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the us versus them mentality, we all know it's huge. Yep. Everybody outside of your group in, Je in the Jehovah's Witness organization is worldly. They are yep. classified as people that you should not associate with. Satan. Yes. No matter who it is. It could be your parents, siblings. Yep. It could be anybody. Pe co-workers. It, it doesn't matter how genuine these people are. Mm -hmm. They are not us. They are no, not a part of us. Jehovah is not going to save these people. And it gives this illusion that there's two worlds in one. Yeah. No, this is all one. This is a kiddie pool. Yeah. Inside of the pool. Yes. Yeah. Inside of the ocean. Yeah, inside the ocean. Yeah. It's all, you just got a, a fish net in it. Right. And yep. this is why um, I think the healing journal is so important as well. Because when you leave, imagine being in this tiny kiddie pool. And then you, remember you used the, um, the example of like, leave it having floaties on yeah and then them telling you like oh my gosh you're gonna die you're gonna drown if you don't keep these floaties on the yep. organization are the floaties right they are. but really you're standing in five feet of water <laughs> the whole time <laughs> and don't even <laughs> don't realize need it the, don't need the floaties because yep, you've never stood in water yeah or you don't remember what it's like to stand in water yes. by yourself or you don't realize that you can swim the whole time. Yeah. Or stand up. <laughs> so the next sign is basically a lack of transparency. They give you this illusion that you are in like um, in a suit that nothing can happen to you. You have this illusion <laughs> yeah. of comfort. Yep. So, <laughs> and completely protected, okay? Yeah. And <laughs> it's very hypocritical because yep. they always point at people that like left the organization. We're just speaking from our perspective from the cult we was in yeah anytime somebody leaves an organization mm -hmm. anything bad happens that's because they left the protection of jehovah yeah like that's because this this and that yep. but what about when bad stuff happened to them now it's a different answer oh satan's trying us we're in the last days we're getting <laughs> close to the end that's why we got the bad stuff happening uh. good stuff happened for them Oh, Jehovah's blessing us. Good stuff happening for people on the outside. <laughs> Satan is doing good stuff for them. It's like yes. witches. Yes. That makes no <laughs> sense. They just pretty much tweak the answer to fit whatever yep. their scenario is. Yep. Or even how we've talked about before, like, hey, their prayers don't hit the ceiling. Yep. You know what I mean? Same yeah. thing. And we were just talking about this, but like, you can find God through any religion, through forms of spirituality. Like, there are miracles and things that have been documented 
throughout history and all religions okay right. so to literally think that your religion is the one and only the arrogance and that this is yeah. the only thing that's going to provide you any comfort or protection the yeah. arrogance like come yeah, on there's nothing humble about the humility is i'm not sure what life's answers are but this works for me but yeah. the arrogance comes where you go to tell other people what they need to do with their life and yeah. what they need to believe yeah. and what's going to happen to them because the arrogance is none of us know what it's like to really be dead and gone exactly so to go and tell other people this is gonna happen when you die how you know right exactly and this is exactly why we went into creating this journal with such an open mind because right. we are not here to tell you guys what to do we are here to work as a tool for you guys to find out what you need to do and yep. that's diving deep and everything because everybody's paths and journeys have been different we all have suffered different kinds of trauma we yep. all have been in different upbringings and the truth is there's more than one way to skin a cat okay and for real we need to be different we can't all be the same because if me and you are exactly the same how can me and you bounce ideas or energy or, yes. or an exchange of anything if we are both like a battery if we both positive it repels. Yeah, like, you need positive, negative. That's yeah. how your remote works. Yes. One battery goes this way, the other goes that way. Yeah. Makes the remote work. That's how humans have to be. We all have to be different. We, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. We, we talk about that even like within our relationship because yeah. we're very different, but we somehow it's it, it vibes and it works. You know right. what I mean? It feels like this is me, this is him, yeah. different, but then it like just comes together yeah, it's you know? like puzzle pieces puzzle pieces don't look alike yeah. but they make a, a perfect picture when they are put together and that's the truth and that's yep. humans that's, that's the earth that is but uh i don't know teach his own we're just we're just two people on <laughs> yeah YouTube. that's just our perspective you know <laughs> yeah. but uh moving on to number six this gets real extreme loyalty is required in a cult it we not just loyalty because loyalty is a normal thing between people but extreme is when you're doing the most as a jehovah's witness you are expected to go to prison to the extent this is something that didn't make sense to me and in my subconscious i always said if this was a thing i'm not doing it <laughs> you know they say that when the end come they're gonna attack jehovah's witnesses what's, what's so special about jehovah's witnesses but <laughs> they they, to attack them. yeah they're gonna throw all the witnesses in jail yeah. and if they ask you to renounce your religion you better not say no and back of my mind what yeah or they can get that you're expected to die for it actually yep, you're even it's that. not even just go to prison you're expected to die for it yep. um didn't we have somebody do that already what was the point of him dying to die? <laughs> we gotta die for it too didn't he die for our sins while we get this fellowship <laughs> phone that part yeah, that like, part, like yeah. what's going on it doesn't make sense yeah. but yeah that's another one that extreme loyalty this is another one of course we talk about in cults number seven isolation from friends and family and it kind of piggybacks off of the last one because it goes with the extreme loyalty. So you are giving yep. extreme loyalty to this organization and you yeah. are expected to leave all of your friends and family that do not believe in the same things and yep. give your loyalty instead to this organization. Yeah, for sure. What make what type of sense does that make? That's and these insane. these are new these are strangers basically, especially the ones that's giving the orders. Yeah. You can't pick up the phone and call these people. Yeah. You don't know these people. These pay, these are people on TV for the most part. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And you are expected to give your loyalty to them and not the people you was born and raised with. Yeah. The people that you share all these memories with, the people that actually love you, the people you can call on the phone at a at a rough time. You you low on your funds. You can call these people and they can make sure you're straight. But you train that out for people that's gonna let you drown. <laughs> yes. As yep. soon as you decide that maybe this is not for you, or as soon as you make a mistake and they cut ties with you, but this yep. whole time you have completely isolated your family. But really it's yeah, the organization that's isolating you. And yep. they do so under the guise of this is what God wants. Right. And that's a god dang lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sign number eight. Exploitation. So, <laughs> I laugh about this one because you don't even notice it whenever you are in it. Right. You know? But the fact that they are able to get free labor from their members. Yep. Free money. Just, and you're going off of just the promise 
of this being given to you way later. Yeah. Not you might cool. even have to die to get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You might have to. Many people have died to get yep. it. Yeah. And you know what's the kicker about that? Hmm. It ain't the resurrection fact. No. It's the resurrection hope. 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 What did Gregory say? Hope you're going to pay your rent. Hope you make it to Paris. <laughs> hope is not. Hope is not legit. Hope it's is not in stone. Ah, no, it's not written in stone. It's just a maybe, maybe not. Who yeah. knows? Could be real. Yeah. Could be fake. Yes, and yeah. you are you are expending your time, your energy, and it's not like a small um, transfer. You know, it's a yeah. lot of time that is going towards this. You're supposed yeah. to have your family worship your personal worship, then meet up in the midweek meeting, then meet up in the um, weekend meeting, then yep. do service probably more times than once a week. Yep. Like this is an entire, you are devoted to this thing, you know, yeah. and you don't even know if it's completely true or not. And then they get their free labor, they get all of their kingdom halls built for free by their yep. members, don't pay them. Yep, and turn around and sell the property, and they not splitting the funds up no. with the people that help them get the money. And no. on top of that, you going and recruiting more people to bring money in. Yeah, and you're not yeah. getting paid for nothing. You getting extorted. Yeah, that's all it is. Welcome to death row. You getting extorted. <laughs> that's all that stuff is. Then you have this is a good one. You know they always throw the apostates under the bus, delegitimizing former members. That's number nine. This one threw me for a loop. <laughs> so bad. So bad. Because even their definite... I'll talk about this until every the video. end. Shoot. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Literally, I'll talk about it every video. Because their definition of apostate is so crazy. And we didn't even think to look up the definition of apostates when we were members. Never. And they always will talk about things in the dictionary webster's dictionary this is dictionary they ain't say nothing about apostate in the dictionary what that means no, that, that is part. that is pretty much a big majority of jehovah's witnesses are apostates because an apostate <laughs> is somebody that leaves a political party or a religion yep so and, if you yeah. used to be baptist and now you are jehovah's witness you are an apostate yeah it has nowhere in the dictionary does it say you turn your back on jehovah god and stop going to the kingdom hall yeah no that's that's bogus they are worshiping the devil and that's like because that's that's the idea you know you are so scared of apostates whenever you're in it and the reason why is because if somebody leaves under you know because they want to it's likely that they have some kind of information that led them to leave you know yeah. or they found a better way or maybe <laughs> there are the ones that just don't want to do it you know what i right. mean but if you renounce a religion it is it has to be for serious reasons right you know? but they make sure you don't find that out which it makes sense from the governing body's perspective because think about if we were allowed to talk to apostates when we were jehovah's witnesses mm -hmm. or ask people why you leave yeah that opens up the door for them finding out that this is not the truth so of yeah. course to cut all ties don't talk to none don't yep. watch no apostates anything that has to do with apostates i gotta make you so afraid yeah. that you run the other way and they but wait wait you ain't you covering your ears and everything you're not trying to hear nothing that's yep. going on over there with them apostates that's yep. how they keep their members in and the moment you wake up it clicks why they tell you not to listen to no apostates oh, absolutely and they say it themselves it's, it's not in their best interest to allow their members to talk to apostates because just like they said in the last update um they said they have contaminating i don't know energy information yeah. i forget what it said but they use yeah. the word contaminating now what does that mean for them what does contaminating mean it means that the information that apostates have or the viewpoint that apostates have can make their current members leave right and so they de delegitimize them not only in like small ways but they'll make up rumors about you yeah. oh they're on drugs oh <laughs> yep. this happened in their life oh they're crazy they had a mental break like they will go to the extents of the yep. earth just to make you seem like it's not true. The worst they say the worst thing you can be, you are enemy of God. Yeah. Yeah, come on now. Y'all the enemies of God. If anything, y'all contaminating and we the bleach. <laughs> we cleaning up house. That's what we do in these so called apostates. And I don't even feed into the whole apostate thing. You apostate. No, I'm just not with the bull. Yeah. Literally. That's how I explain it. And so uh getting into the last one, at least on the list we have, and this was put at the end for a reason. <laughs> Number ten, it is hard to leave. 
That's like an over my dead body saying. thing. Yeah, goes yep. without saying. Like, yeah, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out. We all know that it's hard to get out. And this is why um, healing is so important once yeah, you leave. It is. Because the only way out is not a way to just be like, all right, I'll catch y'all later. It's either we got to kick you out mm -hmm. or you got to leave on your own. But of course, that sounds easy, right? Mm -hmm. No, but if you leave on your own, we're going to make sure don't nobody talk to you no more. Yeah. And if all your friends and family are in this cult, that's going to be tough on you. If all your friends and family was already, you know, the average Joe people. Yeah. You, I mean, you might have the traumas of when you was in it and all that mess you went through. But at least you got your support system back. Yes, yep. exactly. And um, I think that this is another reason, like, we say whenever you leave, healing is required. Because it is very easy to still feel like a prisoner you yep. still feel trapped whenever you leave right. you go through mental breaks because they they have designed this on purpose taking away your support group they have become everything and all things to you while you're in it right so when you leave and everything and all things has now been stripped away from you it is mm. a normal human inter or a normal human reaction for you to feel lost yep. and alone and even more like the black sheep so mm. you may have felt like a prisoner inside of the religion but now you may come out and still are not free so i say the only true way out is to go in and yep. that's why we have created an introspective book yeah. because it's going to show you like all of your traumas that you may be holding on to and um it's going to help you release them yep. so that you are able to truly be free and move on with your life yeah, it is. You going inside and something that we like to bring out, not to uh give you all the, the information yeah, from we the can't book. Give you all that yeah, tea. you have to go yeah. tap in with the book. Yeah. But you've been given the illusion that things are one way, but it's really flipped the other way. So mm -hmm. a lot of people say, Oh no, I'm I'm out the truth. Mm -hmm. No, you are in reality. You are out your mind being in this car. <laughs> and so they give you this illusion that you are out of something. Yes. No, you are in reality yeah. now. You are in the true version of yourself now yes. and get remember when you were a part of this religion you got baptized you felt like you were a part of something you yeah. felt like everything else was outside of you you felt chosen you felt selected you felt special and now that you are out you've been told you are the outsider no and now it's the opposite side thankfully i was able to escape this cult yeah now you should feel like you are the one that selected all these other people that are condemning you or shunning you we feel bad for these people because mm -hmm. these are the ones that are the outsiders. These are the ones wasting their life every single day for an empty promise. So don't yeah. feel like you the outsider now. You are the one that was thankfully chosen. You know, Jehovah chose you yeah. to be in this cult. No, now you were chosen to be the one to get this and go, wait a minute, I'm wasting my life. Even if you are, you know, in your 60s, 70s, it at least you matter. didn't go to your grave waiting on this empty promise yes it doesn't matter how old you are and i want to like really emphasize that because we've had messages as well like we just that people say oh i just feel like i've wasted my whole life and i can be so much farther don't have that kind of no. thinking it's 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 not and i know it's difficult to say that from like our perspective as like a younger couple right. but we're saying this because you don't know how much time you have left so making the best 10 years or 20 last years of your life this is just something that you haven't gone right. through it's not something that made you, you it know? is that's the truth and yeah. something important to believe or even think from this perspective everything that happened in your life think about everything in the past and how it formed you for today everything goes the way it's supposed to go yeah you were in this cult for whatever reason yeah it gave you some type of strength some type of way to question everything from now on in life yes. because you got bamboozled once yes. so don't look at it as because you can't go back and fix nothing from back then no. all you can do is from this point forward mm -hmm. so yeah. understand that you know it's all right for whatever reason i was in it and for whatever reason i woke up now yes and think it didn't happen to you it happened for, for you, you. Yep. yeah um i think one last point that i want to bring out too is that so many of these like religious groups offer external relief yep. okay but you are just band-aiding up like what's in here so i like that once you change the internal relief you know and find internal peace mm -hmm. it nobody can take that away from you you, you know look at how easy it is 
for them to take your external piece away. Boom, we'll just strip you of your community. Boom, yeah. we'll just strip you from being able to talk with this person, associate with this person. You don't have this anymore now. You have to move out of your house. You, have, you yeah. know what I mean? These are all external factors. Yeah. But if you can balance the gauge inside, nobody can take that away. No, that's yours. You own, nobody can take this away in here. It's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody can strip that away from you. You own that 100%. Yep. Yep. And you have happiness within. So the whole time, like you said, they slapping a band aid. You got this leak out of your, you know, coming out the bottom of the sink. The organization, you just throwing towels down on the floor. Mm -hmm. Come back throwing another towel. This book is going and opening up the, the bottom of the sink, seeing the leak, ordering the parts you need, swapping it out. No more leak. You don't have to keep throwing towels on this puddle that's coming out. Yes. You know? That is facts, man. We, yeah, we, we break it down for them. <laughs> but make sure. And we even have the Pimo edition coming out. Oh, my god! Right? Okay, I have to give a quick shout out to my little um, Pimo friend. I'm not going to say her name because obviously mm. she's a Pimo. Hello. Yep. But she was like, I can't wait until I leave this, um, you know, like leave my situation so that I can order your book. Right. And I was like, oh, you just made me think of something. Yep. We're going to make a Pimo edition. So we have created a Pimo edition. You know, this is our normal edition. Obviously, it says rebuilding after a call, a journey to healing. And the whole back is talking about like leaving the Jehovah's Witness organization. Yep. <laughs> Are you reading apostate material? Can That's you what you're going to get. Can you imagine? So the new version, yep. it literally just says healing journal it doesn't right. have our names on it doesn't have our names on the back it's literally just the ESPN and it just says healing journal the black is back is completely plain but yep. it is all the same information inside yep it's just which cover you want to put on there yes this yep. is for our people yep shout out to y'all but yes. this is this is the first of its kind and yeah we're really yeah. excited about it and um I'm sure that there will be different editions later on for the people who have bought it once you guys go through it and everything, we want reviews. Yeah, please give we us some want, reviews. Yes. Drop some videos, something. Yeah, we, yeah. we never made a book before, so we need to yeah. know like how this has helped you or if it has or give us recommendations on what we can change to make it better and right. where you see faults at in the book to where we can add and fill a void. Let right. us know, guys. Yeah, okay? because the whole purpose is... We could have took the information and ran with it, but we want everybody to be able to get through this the best way possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing is we are almost at 5,000 subscribers. We told you guys in the last video, once we hit the um, 5,000 subscribers, we yeah. are going to be doing a giveaway. And this is a very humbling experience to us, I think, because yeah. we've had people ask us for autographed copies of the book. Okay? Right. Which and we just, feels really weird to us. Yeah, like it's even like one time somebody came up to us out to eat, like, we love, I love y'all podcast. And it's yeah. like, we never had nobody say that to us before. We didn't yeah. intend on having a YouTube channel about, no. you know, escaping this religion. We just no. told one story and a lot of people watched it. And it's yeah. like, dang. I mean, I guess we can keep rolling with this, and now it became something that was our purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it is feeling uh, like it's so nice to find something that you're helping other people and you feel like you are giving back. So yep. this is definitely a humbling experience, but our giveaway is going to be a signed copy. There'll be a small message from us inside and yep. um, a $50 gift card. So yeah. be on the lookout for that. We are literally so close. I think only like 25 subscribers away or something yeah and this happened quick yeah yep so make sure y'all just keep hitting this up on our instagram at awaken troops ig in the description we got the original video where we go more into detail about the cost this was kind of like a summary and then tying in the book with it order the book we got this one we got our pimo version in the description yeah let's see what else they got to do like comment and subscribe and we'll catch y'all on the next one Peace. Peace.